What it do, bruh? Talk of the town, Nintendo, Doc Trey, still holding it down, still make the best games, and you know this, bro, it's the truth. If you don't like it, you can have that seat All right, so we now have what we've been waiting for for quite a while. Apparently, die shots of the Nintendo Switch SoC are now out in the breath of the wild. <laughs> yeah, so... As you can see here, this is comparing the Nintendo Switch die shot to that of the Tegra X1. We have the Nintendo Switch SoC in next gen brown and the colorful version is a stock Tegra X1. So according to the images, as you can see, they look pretty much identical now before you rage and go all crazy it appears to me anyway that maybe just maybe this chip was kind of ahead of its time because as we've been discussing this chip over the last few months we have found that the other devices using this chip have been known to throttle, have been known to uh, somewhat overheat at any clock speeds that are clocked over what the Nintendo Switch is, which actually is crazy because there's a lot of people talking about, oh, this isn't as powerful as my such and such device that uses a Tegra X1, but that's actually false because those devices throttle and have to underclock so much that the Nintendo Switch is the only device using this chip that maintains those clock speeds at all times that high. So technically, technically, um, the Nintendo Switch is the most powerful uh, system that has ever had a Tegra X1 because the clock speeds are constant unlike these other devices where it throttles and some of the clock speeds go lower than even the N64 so based on that it appears to me that maybe the Tegra X1 was kind of good enough and a lot more powerful than people gave it credit for and probably before its time and the reason why I say that also is the fact that this system was introduced in 2014 and launched in early 2015, yet still in 2017, it's still considered like the most powerful mobile uh, SOC. With all the advancements and technology we've had over the last few years, this mobile chip released a couple years ago is still considered the most powerful. That should tell you something right there. And honestly, I'm kind of more impressed with the chip now with the fact that this is technically, at least going by these die shots, it's technically the same Tegra X1 with the clock speeds down clock so that they don't overheat with a much better a graphics API and a gig more of RAM than the Shield tablet. And it's still able to put out what it's putting out now. And like I told you guys before, what we're seeing now on the Switch aren't even games that's taking advantage really of the system. These are Wii U Plus ports and they still look that good. I'm actually really impressed by that. And honestly, you should be too, if you know what you're talking about anyway. So, NVIDIA said that the chip was customized, uh, it was a custom chip, and 500 man years of, of work went into it. But, like I said, or actually, I didn't say this, I'm sorry. <laughs> I've read um, from some posters on Neil Gaff that 500 man years depending on how many people was working on the project, isn't really that many people. I mean, I mean, that's not a lot of time. 
like for instance the PlayStation 3's GPU which wasn't that customized compared to say the Xbox 360 GPU at that time I think they had something like 1500 man years so it appears based on the die shots and based on what we've been hearing about the chip even based on honestly what I heard from one of my definitive sources who I need to get back to and see what his thoughts are on this. It sounds like most of the customization of the chip is the graphics API. The graphics API and keeping the chip from throttling. Okay. Now, make no mistake, having a very good graphics API is just as important, if not more important, than the horsepower. That's very important. OK, so that's what it looks like to me. It looks like that's where the customization went from keeping the chip from uh, overheating. Um, making the graphics API way better because it's way the graphics API is not only superior to that, what people had access to on the NVIDIA shield, but according to developers, it's up there with the PlayStation 4's API in terms of ease of use. So that's a great thing. That's fantastic. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Are you disappointed by that? Um, based on what we've seen of the system, I don't think you should be. Um, at least yet. We'll see what happens with the games that are built from the ground up for the Nintendo Switch, not Wii U ports, not little quick cash in stuff, the 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 real deal nitty gritty. And we I mean we've already seen a taste of that with uh the new Mario game, which looks fantastic. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. I'm out.